Watch him throw the ball, we gon' pick it off You gon' let him hit the hole or you gon' cut it off You gon' play through fourth and long or you gon' punt it off Your defenders have you hit us, put your pads in Don't be looking for the ref to throw no flags in Keep the helmet on, keep the cleats tight You the type to want to win by any means, right? You should look alive, this is Trapper Dive What's going on, y'all? This is Henny Mole, Hen Dog Mole, Coach Mole, Molly Mole, all that good stuff, man. Your host of the Chopper Die Podcast, and welcome to part two of two of the Commander Film Session with the good man Logan Paulson. Uh, last one, if you missed it, make sure you check that out. It was of third round pick Brian Robinson Jr. out of Alabama. Uh, he broke down some really good things for for uh, Brian. And, I'm not going to spoil you anything. Just make sure you go ahead and stop what you're doing now. And if you haven't caught up, to go ahead and catch up and watch that film session on uh, Brian Robinson Jr. But next up on this episode, we have Fedarian Mathis of Alabama, man, as well. Again, <laughs> back-to-back Alabama players. I didn't even realize it in the moment that when we did the film session, there was going to be those two. Um, if you missed the Jahan Dotson one, by the way, I do have that on my page. If you all want to try and get Logan on and we can do a more in-depth uh, breakdown on Jahan and, and some other players, then, you know, y'all let me know in the comments, man. We, we enjoy the engagement. Let us know something. You know, I look, can't do this by myself. Support support is needed in all facets. So if, if you all like this content and you want to try and get Logan on again, uh, let me know and we can try and make something work down the line. But as we said, man, um, for Darian Matthews is up right now. Uh, he broke down some some really good details uh, of his run fits, his mental processing, and his ability to to play multiple uh, fronts that he's facing up against in the run game. So from the offensive lineman, um, and also some things that he does well in the pass game. So we're going to go ahead and tune in right now. As always, give us that like, that subscribe, that comment, man. And if you're listening on the podcast, which I advise you to tune in to this show and view it so you can understand, you know, what what we're talking about here and watch along with this. But um, I advise you to tune in uh, and, and do things like that. So, but make sure you always like, subscribe, comment, rate, review if you're listening to the podcast. And Fedarian Mathis is up right now. And right now we got the good man, Logan Paulson, checking in with the Trap of Dive. Uh, he is here to join us to talk a little bit. I'm excited to look at this these clips, man. Absolutely. Uh, so look, first and foremost, I, I, it, it should have been done before we started, but there is a congratulations in order. So let's get that out the way. I, I did see um, on my timeline that you had signed up with a podcast. Uh, before we get started, did you want you want to share some light on, on what you got going on on your side? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So like me and Craig Hoffman, were doing a podcast through uh, 106.7 The Fan. And basically, like we had a lot of good conversations in our pregame show last year before the games, and we thought like why not bring that to like a longer, longer format where we could kind of really dive into some of those issues as opposed to being hampered by the uh, fifteen-minute segment. It's called Take Command. I think you can find it anywhere you would get your podcast normally. It's on the uh, Odyssey um, Sports Network. So yeah, we're really excited about it. Absolutely. Well, congratulations once again. And ladies and gentlemen, we will get started on our film session. Uh, as we get into these things, Logan, uh, your overall thoughts of the player himself, uh, how, how do you think he, he's going to fit with this uh, defense and just overall just the, the type of player that he is? How do you, how do you like him? Yeah, so I really I, – so I had watched uh, Fildarian before the draft had started, and I liked him quite a bit. I thought he was just a very solid player and – um, I liked his value. I thought maybe uh, late third, late second, early third. Um, but the the more I watched him, quite honestly, I thought like the more I liked him. The, like you see his physicality, you see him use his tremendous arm length. Uh, the other thing I like about him is he's team captain. He runs to the football for a big man, and he has good instincts when it comes to stopping the run. And I think he's got better upside as a pass rusher than people give him credit for. Now, I like I like that I like that last part. Um... The, the the pass rush side, but uh, first and foremost, let's go ahead and get to the, the run game and, and see yeah. some things that stand out. Uh, we have a, a, a few clips, man, that kind of shows his his positioning and, and, and leverage and, and different alignments as well on that defensive front because he didn't just play 
when people think about like the nose tackle position or, or what he may provide to the, the Washington Commanders defense, it's not just that he played interior uh, for the, the Alabama Crimson Tide. He lined up on the defensive end at times. <laughs> he lined up the three tech, two tech, uh, zero, every, everywhere that you can put him, he kind of, he kind of did that. But, um, Let's go ahead and get into some things. Like, like I said, the run game, uh, I'll run with this first play, and we can run it back uh, and let you talk about what you're seeing. Yeah, so I think the great thing here is, like, the way he plays this is so intuitive, right? I think when you watch this, he's uh, he's playing, like, this inside shoulder of the tackle, so the seven of the guard. But he also understands how to play, like, a gap and a half. So he feels the running back cutting back. You know, he feels it cutting back behind the double team. And watch how he sinks his hip down there and basically creates a pile. So now 14 in this look, who's like kind of like their Buffalo nickel player, I'm assuming, is basically unblocked because of how he's playing this double team. Now, eventually this double team will peel and get to 14, but it lets 14 diagnose this a little bit longer. And that's great. You know what I mean? And I think the fact he understands how to do this. And like I think the other thing is watch how he uses this leverage here to throw the guard off and make himself viable to tackle the ball. Is, what I like to call like the dark arts of stopping the run. He understands how to attack shoulders, how to play half a man. Like watch, he's playing in his gap here. He stunts across the guy's face and then he immediately feels the double team. There's no hesitation. Gets to a knee, splits it, love it. And then is able to kind of use his leverage to get it on the play, which, which you like a lot. Yeah. And one of the things that I, I learned quickly is from Mike Daniels um, of the Green Bay Packers at one point. Uh, this is actually where I, cause at, at in my novice area, at first when I saw this, I was like, why is he giving up ground? But it's like mm -hmm. a give and take in a sense, like you're giving up ground to make a play in the same vein. So when you see that pressure from uh, 76, you're still, I mean, you're losing for a second, but it's not necessarily a loss. You're miss, you're, you're really just trying to gain, uh, like you said, some leverage and also help 14 out in the same vein. So 14 has to make a play on his side too. So both of you all can succeed on this uh, on this run. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, like this is a, he has cleaner looks than this, but like this understanding, I think is what you're looking for, right? Like every clip tells you a story. So first you get a very unselfish football player, a guy that's willing to kind of get in here and get gritty with it. And then also you get a guy who um, kind of understands the intent of this run. He's not trying to cross the guard's face. He's in his gap. He knows what he's doing. Those are all really exciting things when you're evaluating this guy. Absolutely. Uh, next play, we have Miami. And this time, he is lined up over the center. Uh, we'll go ahead and see this. This was another double-team example. Yeah, I, I like this play a lot. I think what you what you get out of this one that's really good is you see his length. Like, you see how he's not, like, kind of – his elbows aren't bent. You see how the center's kind of backing up. His head's moving back. That's not because Fildarian's, like, crazy strong. It's because Fildarian has – excellent arm length right and again here you say you see and you see him play this gap and a half right he actually has this front side a gap i think in this defense but he understands that this see how his hat starts to the left of the center uh pre-snap so i think he's got this left a gap here and this is all assumption i don't know exactly what they're doing here but when the double team comes he doesn't vacate he doesn't leave he sits kind of holds this gap in a nice way and then Again, look at eight. Look at how eight's able to run to the football. Like, no one is touching eight. And that's because Vildarian does an excellent job on the double team while still maintaining the correct gap. So I think that that's something that um, he really brings. And I think about Jamin. I think about Cole. I think about those guys who have a really yes. hard time fighting off blocks. You know, I think they, I think, and diagnosing quickly. This gives them an extra beat to get that done. And it's not like he's doing anything crazy. He just is doing what he's supposed to do. And he's physically gifted enough to get it done on a high level and still make the tackle. Absolutely. And, and the vision on, on, in the back end, just to even be able to locate the ball, uh, yeah. that's that's one example, but there's multiple that will, that will come across. Uh, this one that I like the most, man, uh, I'll run through it. I'm not going to uh, like go through the actual play, but the, the timing of the play, like the competitive toughness stands out in this because it is at the end of the game against the Texas A&M. And if you watch the film, meaning you, the, the listeners or the viewers, and you or even watch the game real time, you kind of know at the end of the game, uh, what the score was in a sense and stuff like that. So he's fighting to the very end to make a play for this team, this Alabama uh, Crimson Tide defense, and try to win this game for him. So I'll go ahead and run through it, and we can go uh, straight from the top. Yeah. Again, just a good understanding of double team. Like it just, and that just shows up. That's like how that's who he is, you know, and this is the same kind of thing, right? He's not vacating. He's in his gap. 
He's unselfish football player. He's playing the outside shoulder of the guard. It just it's and that this is how he does it. This is who he is, and I think that's always fun when you get a guy who's who's about that life on the into on the inside of the defensive line. Absolutely, and then Shed make the play and make the tackle. Um, here, I actually don't remember this one. I'll run it through. Oh, there we go. So this one I felt was it a good display because when we talk about. Uh, big men and uh, what they provide, like in the image, in your head, when you think of a Federian Mathis, you think lumbering big man who's just there to sit there and not move. Uh, and, and and no disrespect to any former players, but when you think about nose tackles for the Washington Redskins fans wise, you think of pot roast. And that's no disrespect to him in terms of what his skill set was. I can't even tell you back then what it was, but you think of certain people who can't do certain things or who can do certain things, but for him with the lateral quickness uh kind of stands out on this play in a sense so uh, i'll hand this over to you and see what you see yeah so i totally agree and i think that's one of the things about him is like you know i i I thought this was such a need for the team that i thought they might go jordan davis at 11 because they needed like a big kind of run first type of player but you know when you think about the scheme that dak del rio runs he runs a gap scheme so everyone has their own gap and you can't just have a big lumbering slug in there so when I see stuff like this, and this again is something you see on his tape quite a bit. He's an athlete. He's a big man. Who's pretty athletic and runs. And I, the other thing I like about it is he plays hard. You know, a lot of these guys, these really big guys, there's questions about conditioning. There's questions about how hard they're playing because they're trying to save themselves for the next down. When you watch him play, like, are there bad plays? Yes. But I think he makes up for it by this, again, the foot speed quickness that you're talking about here. And then his ability to close and just pursue to the ball. Because it, it tells me that football is important to him, you know, in addition to kind of being a good athlete. Absolutely. Um, a couple more on our side. This time I lined up right over the tackle, and we'll run this one through. And that one right there. Uh, again, so, again, here, oh, again, yeah, you got it. Yeah, I think the, like, the thing I like about it is he's, again, he's kind of playing this two-gap. And watch his extension. You know, see how he's able to get extension on the alignment? which allows him to play this kind of two gap, gap and a half technique, whatever you want to call it. And I, I think it's just, it's awesome. It's just, it's, it's what, it's a skill set that is undervalued because it's not overly sexy and he just does it down in and down out, you know, and he, he gets it on the play. Great. But to me, it's the stuff at the beginning of the play that gets you excited because a lot of big, a lot of big interior guys don't have super long arms. He has 34, 35 and a half, 35 inch, inch arms, which is crazy long. And, for him to be using that length with all that strength, that's what gets me excited because there's high upside there. So let me ask you this question, uh, Logan. Obviously, I mean, you know the answer. Um, we know the answer, but kind of go into detail about, and we'll we'll talk about this as well when we get to the pass rush side, but the importance of those, this use of hands. Like some people, when you're at the point of attack, you're not like some people don't, necessarily think to use that lower body along with their upper body in terms of their hand usage uh it doesn't always click for some athletes to to kind of put two and two together and just talk about the the use of hands and how important it is on every single play in the trenches i mean hand use in the nfl and college and high school is how you control if you're the blocker how you control the the defensive player and if you're the defensive player it's how you control the offensive lineman and so hand use is kind of one of the most deciding factors in good football players like i it's very i'm trying to remember i can't think of a bad of a good football player who had bad hands because it allows them to do so much in terms of controlling the block and coverage it's really important too and so again for him to be using his length like this consistently down in and down out it just it means he is in control of the block like even if he's losing ground he's in control of the block i remember guys like demarcus Ware um uh jpp right or um not jpp but the defensive end now for tampa bay who blew his hand up with the firecracker yeah (laughs) yeah all those dudes got long arms you know what i mean and alden smith long arms and when you try to block them as a tight end or a tackle they you doesn't matter how strong you are if i can't fit my hands on you i can't out leverage your position i can't lift you out of your position and it makes it almost impossible for me to have a successful block and he's very good at using his hands like even here right this isn't bad by this guard from lsu but 
because he's got inside hand placement, he's able to jack the guard back. And then even though the guard has him covered up, Fedarian can see to the ball because of the length and the space he's created with his arms. And so every level of football, if you're like a high school kid listening to this, you're a high school coach, like hand usage is so critical. Absolutely. And for you, a question for you uh, during your playing days, um, when you think about, because inline blocking is important, obviously, and, and you're basically, especially with the run schemes, you're basically, you're part of the offensive line in that instance. Uh, who were some of the more difficult uh, defenders, defensive linemen, or even linebackers, edge, edge linebackers that you had to go up against in your memory? Yeah, so obviously DeMarcus Ware is one that comes to mind because I got him kind of when he was in his prime and I was like a rookie at the time. Alden Smith, again, when he played hard, JPP when he played hard. Um, they guys are just unblockable and all those guys have long arms and are difficult to kind of get into and difficult to out leverage. And I think, um, those guys, you know, Jared Allen from Minnesota was very difficult because he didn't have great arm length, but he was very good with quick hands and tight areas. So very hard to get your hands on him. And he just was, uh, you know, those, those are the types of guys that stick out to me, guys that were physically very gifted, worked very hard and, uh, just made it very challenging. His long arm is incredible in the run game. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it helps him out too. I guess I would, again, when we get to the passing side, I, I have further questions with the long arm thing. But yeah, in the run game, it, it, it serves him much benefit. Obviously, if you, can, if, if you can work it in the pass game too, it kind of helps with your bull rush. But um, yeah, this is kind of, I don't think people understand like the importance of a Phil Mathis, as you said earlier. And and that's why, like I said, when I wanted to start off with one of my favorite players, this is this is the guy. The more you watch him, the more you kind of understand how yeah. he can fit in his defense. Yeah, and I think the crazy thing about this that's really cool is like how he fits that. If you go back to that last clip, like they're you. getting a down block by the guard, right? And he's playing a four eye, so he's playing the inside shoulder of the tackle. And a lot of guys would chase the hip of the guard here, right? They chase seventy as he blocks down on the nose, but he he identifies the run here and understands what the tackle is trying to do. The tackle is trying to influence him to go down so they can wash, so they can pull the backside guard and tackle around and get this ball on the edge. But he sees it. He understands it. So not only is there like a physical understanding, like of how to use his Amazing. hands and leverage, but he also understands scheme really well. And that awareness, like, I don't know if he studies a lot. I haven't had an opportunity to talk to him about football specifically. Seems like a nice guy when I have talked to him. But again, like that is next level stuff, like not being – misled by the uh by the offensive kind of misdirection absolutely all right so i mean same thing here and here uh and i think it was one more yeah now this one i did have a question on so i'll run it back so we mm -hmm. can look at it and uh get back to it all right here we go and now on my my question with this play mm -hmm. when you talk about strengths and weaknesses obviously we know he's strong in the run game but then there's also things when 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 coaches or, or a scout or gm or anybody wants to ask you in detail what does he do well in the run versus what doesn't he do well in the run i don't know the true answer to this i haven't had like a thousand exposures to mathis in this instance but when i it appears to be a reach block for him mm -hmm. um there's concerns about you know, his effort or excuse me, not his effort, but his technique against reach blocks. Now, I don't personally, I didn't see many instances where it was bad, but I do want to give you the floor on if you had an opinion on his uh, his technique and being able to play against reach blocks. Can you rewind this real quick? Yes, sir. I got you. Thank you. Yeah. So just based on his alignment, I would think that he'd be playing the guard here or the, the center, excuse me um playing the backside shoulder to the center um let it go please and especially with the weak side pressure there uh number four coming off the edge you think he'd be more aggressive but what what you like here is that even he's still in his gap technically so even though this is a reach by the center like the guy who's got to reach him on the double team is the guard is the backside guard the backside guard has to get his hat across to the four here to make this play go but Fildarian feels it, and you see how he pushes his hat to the play side of this run. And so basically he's creating a, an inability, even though he's technically maybe out of his gap, he's not playing the center. He has replaced the center by playing into the guard and then kind of ricocheting back out. 
which is exactly what you want to do here. And you've eliminated the cutback for the runner. And then you see his athleticism here to kind of outrun this, which is a perimeter run. And everyone gets hollow hyped about Jordan Davis running people down, but Phil Darian does that at a high level too. And so I just, it's, it's just nice. It's a nice skill set to have, you know what I mean? It's a nice thing to see from a guy and he just seems to understand it at a really high level, which is always fun to watch. So. Absolutely. Now, the pass game with Big Phil. Um, this might be the is this the play where he like outside? He chops the outside hand like off a kind of a yes. fake yes. long arm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Here we go. Yeah, that's dirty. Like, I mean, that's a big dude, and like for him to move that way, you know, and recover and the, get the like, recovery. Like he, like yeah, he, he, again, he's right there. Like when he's running the ball, you see a little tightness in his hips. You see he has a hard time turning the corner here, but like. Gosh, for him to jab, fake that long arm, attack the outside shoulder here, like, golly, that's Follow through. That's pretty cool, man. Like, that's pretty cool to see that level of twitch from a guy who does all that other stuff in terms of stopping the run. Absolutely. Um, so, as we actually, I want to show the next one. It's, it's like two or three that, that were really good off the top, and I want, I want to get your opinion on that. And then I have some questions. Here we go. There's another one that I, I really liked here. Um, do you now, since you got the first one, right? Let me ask you, do you know what play this is? Um, I don't know. Cause I watched, I was this, I've watched this game cause I watched uh, 55. He was, uh, uh -huh. that screen who got drafted by, um, Houston, you know, the guard he's playing left tackle. So I probably didn't see this. Okay, play. Right. Let's, let's see what we got here. All right. Here we go. And then the effort, I mean, the ball yeah, was out, yeah. but he was already in pursuit mode. Yeah, not the cleanest like rush, right? Because, um, mm -hmm. but I will say, like the slides coming to him, you know, so the center's working right. So obviously, to defeat the inside hand of the guard here, and then I guess you see, again, you see the length on the pass rush too. You see, I was able to kind of get the space from the center, and then the club here. Like he's he's got a good motor, which for big guys is super important. It's the violent hands. Like I, I, I think one of the things that that I've come to learn, like even if you're, I would say struggling or your your initial move isn't effective but like the the contact with your hands like the, the at the point of attack like if you have violent hands you'll see that effect from the, the offensive lineman like you'll see yeah. the the ripple effects of your violent hands from the offensive lineman if they jolt back or they get shocked or something like that you're going to see it and his 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 impact is, is immediate even yeah. if he isn't really he had help if he had or they had help at first but still you still see the effectiveness from him and his hands, his active hands moving like that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, here we go again. Let's go ahead and run this one through. Yeah, so that's like an RPO looks like. Um, or no, this is empty, so never mind. But yeah, like they've got, this is a weird play here. So they're faking the quarterback power here, which is weird because like as a rusher, you're thinking, um, that this is probably because it's empty, you know, there's no back in the backfield, that it's probably a passing situation. But in college, because all these quarterbacks run so much, yeah, they're pulling the backside guard there. They, they're trying to sell action to get the linebackers to step up, to get the uh, D line to stick to blocks. And this is where you see that length come into play, right? Because if usually when that guard pulls, you're thinking run, but he's got vision to the backfield. He sees it's not a run. And again, he's using those long arms to diagnose that. And then he's got nice active hands off the rush here. So chops the outside hand, then he rips. And then I think the finish, that urgency to finish is super important also. Yes. Um, all right. Which one is this? Okay. So this one, as you, you'll see, like, as you said initially with the, the Texas A&M uh, clip, it's not necessarily a good initial rush. But what also speaks to Darian is something that he mentioned in the run game uh, when we watch those clips is his effort. Like, mm -hmm. his effort is nonstop. And while he's not necessarily penetrating the pocket, you're seeing those yo, his arms move. Like, he's he's constantly trying to get to the quarterback, and it, and it, and it works for him here. Yeah, I think you see a couple things here. One, you see kind of his rawness as a rusher. And I think that that's something that he's going to have to grow at. Like, I think he's got upside, which you showed with those first two clips. Like, obviously, he's got good hand work. He does some really nice things. Um, but I will also say like he is, he gets a little raw, but I think a lot of times just his effort makes up for that, you know? And I think like, when you talk about a guy like Ryan Kerrigan, for example, like Ryan, Ryan wasn't like the most nuanced pass rusher of all time. Right. He was very, um, kind of deliberate with his pass rush move, but you knew he was going to rush as hard as he could every single time. And as a result, he would get four sacks of just rushing hard. And so I think Phil Darian at times falls into that category of just like his effort elevates the play even though his technique 
as a pass rusher can be a little bit better. And there we go. This is this is that's perfect timing because um, the tail end of these clips is actually where I was getting to somewhat in a sense like technique is is one thing and and sometimes I feel like in this past game uh like obviously one of the harder things for defensive linemen is probably the pass rush because it, it requires so much effort um I mean it's, it's part of your job it is what it is but in the same vein you're going upfield and sometimes I don't see like the consistent burst that you that you would like to see from an interior or even a defensive lineman generally um but then also when he gets locked up it's hard for him to shed um in the yeah. past game so i don't i don't i want to get your thoughts on what do you think about like his counter moves or anything that's underdeveloped because as you said he is kind of raw um but this is where i think he's struggling uh, specifically in his counter moves his use of hands like once that initial pass rush is de- is or initial pass rush moves are defeated there is no counters to follow yeah, I think uh, one of the things here is like, I think he kind of wins on the inside move here, like in terms of body position. So like you see, if you go back to the first yep, clip, how he kind of like stutter steps and his hat is inside the guards. I think it looks like he's worried about the chip, right, oh, from the back. Okay. So he kind of squares up the guard here and then you get into like a full bull. And this is like pass rushing, no, no, one on one, right? You never want to rush down the middle of a man um, if you can help it. Even on a bull rush, you kind of want to shade a half. So you can turn the shoulder and get him off balance. So the back kind of like forces him back into a bull, but you do see this even on plays where there is no chip. He gets in these kind of really thick rush angles on the offensive lineman. See how his hat is above the 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 the, the guard's hat, and then he's got to reset and start his rush. Good rushes are able to keep their hat low. He's not using his arm length, which we've talked about extensively. You'll see at times he'll get in those situations, but be able to overcome it because of his arm length. So I think like. Again, like those are things that, um, again, he's he's green in those areas, mm-hmm. but I think he has shown enough twitch and explosiveness that he can overcome that. Now, Alabama, and, I, and this will be the last one, I believe, on Fedarian. Alabama used um, Fedarian on stunts and twists yeah. uh, a, a number of times. And uh, I think one of the things when you think about stunts and twists, like the crash man, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I, I would expect the crash man to be a little bit more violent um, in this crash uh, to kind of help that looper or that the, the other man working the game with him. Uh, and for some of the ones that I did have exposure to for Fedarian, it's either timing or a lack of force as that person, as that looper uh, trying to help his, his teammate out. So I, I'll hand the floor over to you and see if you had any uh, exposure to it as well and what your thoughts was when he was that stunt or twist uh, twist person. Yeah, so I think a couple things here. This looks like the end screwed this up, looks like okay. to me. I think Phil Darian's usually pretty good at these. He understands a nice okay. feel for how to run these um, in terms of timing. So you see how he kind of steps into the guard I got you. here at the beginning of the play? To me, because he's so good at it, he's running with a good technique. He's kind of giving the guard his hands. He's forcing the guard to pass that. I think he's expecting 31 to come in here and, and do some damage to the left hip, or to the right hip of so the guard. So the inverse of what I was saying then. I sense. think the end screwed this up, but okay. I don't know. You know what I mean? Because on the other side, they're running the reverse stunt. So maybe he missed the call, but he's running this like he's expecting to get a pick here. You know what I mean? Okay. So I think that that's yeah. something to be considered, like in this clip. But, you know, usually he's pretty good at running stunts and he's very selfless. Okay. And that's something that when you talk to Ron specifically, Ron harps on extensively is that he is a selfless player when it comes to running stunts and getting guys free in the rush, which is something that's great for Allen Payne, Montez, and Chase. Okay. And this was last thing, some, somewhat similar to what you said earlier, so we don't really have to rehash it, but um, in a sense, that that tackle or guard getting the inside uh, inside his chest and basically being able to control him at some point. You see, yeah. never want to go head up, and um, he ends up doing that in a slight, in a slight step right here. Yeah, um, and you yeah. see like how he's his hands are outside of the guard's hands. You know, like that's just bad technique by him. And I think that's something that again it shows up semi regularly for him. Damn, set, huh, watch him throw the ball. We gonna pick it off. You gonna let him hit the hole or you gonna cut it off? You gonna play through fourth and long or you gonna punt it off? Your defenders have you hit us, put your pads in. Don't be looking for the ref to throw no flags in. Keep the helmet on. Keep your cleats tight. You the type to want to win by any means, right? You should look alive. This is Trapper Dive.